before beginning today's video, as usual, I'd like to thank all my members and I welcome Nathan, Max Ha, as well as Asintia to the Zip Fan membership family. Thank you so much, everybody, for your support. For those of you guys who do not know, you can actually become a member by clicking on the join button and you can look at the various perks within the different tiers and then support Zebo Gaming accordingly. Hana has a clumsy personality as well as an unlucky nature. So this led to many funny moments within the short story itself as you guys will experience it yourself when it's released officially. So just a bit of spoiler, Hana is not actually the Green Reaper that we met within the Nari short story. That's a different person altogether. So in today's video, we are going to analyze how worthy is Green Reaper Hana potentially and whether or not she'll be worth your resources. Due to her clumsy personality and unlucky nature, everything she does usually ends up as a disaster and because of this, Hana would often be afraid to act due to fear for failure. Her performance in the Afterworld Inc. is always rock bottom and she's deemed as the useless Grim Reaper in the company. When she was alive, people around her would often die due to unknowing reasons and such freak incidents continued to occur and people started to leave her and soon she was all alone. So this left a scar in her spirit when she started to become scared to hang around others due to such accidents happening. Anna's stats ranking based on level 83 heroes are 3 for attack, 12 for defense and 11 for HP. So overall she has a quite balanced stat line with a good distribution across the different stats. At the same time, her party buff is crit chance plus 40% with a 5% shield increase on battle start as well as a 1% HP recovery on enemy kill and a 10% skill damage increase. A normal attack, Dance of the Afterworld is a very straightforward skill, so she will go to the opponent, swing the weapon and then chase after them. So during this normal attack, she's able to deal AoE damage so she can hit multiple targets at the same time. And on the third attack, she will actually unleash a hook where this will allow her to chase after the enemies by hooking onto them. So sort of like a hit and chase character and her chain skill is punishing chains so it's a very straightforward skill it's just there to do 470% of her DPS damage but if you combine that with a high crit hit chance it allows you to do massive damage if the chain skill as well as normal attack happen to crit however one thing about the chain skill is in usual arena battle it's kind of hard to actually unleash your chain skill because her weapon skill takes around three to four weapon skills to fully crowd control your enemy so that's why the chain skill is very rare but it has a very nice animation and a really nice sound effect her special ability is immortal authority and when her hp becomes zero she immediately recovers 10 percent of her hp and becomes invincible for 4 seconds. So during this invincible state, her attack speed as well as movement speed is increased by 30% for 10 seconds. So this ability has a cooldown of 60 seconds and in most cases, it's not very feasible to assume that you can use it multiple times because within Colosseum, I think she dies pretty easily or rather she won't last until the second cycle of this skill so that's that and within the raid itself she doesn't really have any need for this ability because within raid you usually don't die and that's why this ability is relatively obsolete there so the best scenario for this skill is to use within the arena itself so within arena i think this skill is superb for counter killing your opponent and buying yourself additional time to perform your weapon skill, to chain your enemies and perform the reverse or kill. So her exclusive weapon is known as Unchained, which is an epic staff providing additional crit chance, defensive stat in HP and defense, as well as a bit of offensive stat in terms of skill damage and weapon skill regen speed. So on hit, it allows her to inflict a scar on the enemy to do additional 60% DPS. It also allows her to recover damage or recover HP equal to the inflicted damage. It's like a lifesteal mechanics but slightly weaker compared to Kamel. And this ability activates once every 3 seconds. So there's sort of a balance to it because you can't really hit enemies all the time and heal them every time you touch them. So that's something that holds her back. Her exclusive weapon skill is known as Deathly Terrifying which have a relatively low DPS of 140% but a super duper low regen time. 
So this weapon skill takes around 3 to 4 skills to actually crowd control your enemy. And on arena, you probably need 5 skills. So that's kind of a turn off for most people. But do remember that the regen time for this weapon is super duper low. So it's a super spammable weapon. And in most cases, if you can last until the later part of the arena battle, you're probably gonna use your chain skill and still win the match by killing your opponent. Also take note that there's a different animation for her weapon skill for the first three. So if I'm not wrong, the first one is a smashing action and then the second one is a hook and smash action and then the third one will just be a smash action. So that's something unique about her weapon skill due to the changing animation. Now moving towards the Colosseum and Arena analysis. Personally, in terms of Colosseum, I think she's a very bad character there because her special ability isn't really that good in Colosseum. As she's a warrior, she dies really easily and there's a lot of Kamels running around. So it's a major counter to her. And even if on paper, their ability seems very amazing, the bar from their ability is just not that good under a Colosseum setting with so many hyper offensive teams or really tanky teams that can just out sustain you. And being a melee unit doesn't help her either. So that's why personally, I don't think she'll be any good within Colosseum. So try to avoid using her unless you don't really care about your rankings. So in all honesty, I think Hana really shines within the arena, even though there's a lot of Kamels running around, but I still feel that she's a really solid character there, being able to introduce more melee crit archetypes, as well as allowing you to do different combinations with her due to her flexibility in terms of party buff, as well as playstyle. And without further ado, I'll just share with you guys some of my arena battles using her, and let you guys see her power level and how to run her in arena in general.
Now moving towards the PV aspects, I think in general she's a pretty average PV unit because the special ability is really good only if you're able to control her and manipulate the special abilities cooldown because in scenarios where you last more than 60 seconds, you are gonna use the skill multiple times. However, in the current state of things, I think either number one, the bosses hit too hard or number two, the four second timer from the invulnerability isn't really sufficient for you to kite out the remaining 60 seconds. If the bosses are really very hard, you're not gonna survive another 60 seconds after she comes back to life. And in terms of guild rate as well as team building in general, for guild rate, she's not that good in water teams because Garum is the king of raid and she's not good when you synergize with Garum because she's melee and Garum is range. And in terms of putting her in a melee team, if you have the respective elemental stuff, such as a dark staff, you can throw her in a dark melee team. And if you have a fire staff, you can throw her in the fire melee team. If you have a basic staff, you can also put her in the basic melee team as well. So these are the few team setups I can think of for her. Personally, her kit isn't really meant for dealing a lot of damage, right? Even though her skill has a lot of burst, but there's no defense reduction, there's no elemental reduction. So overall, I think in terms of rage, she's probably somewhere below at the low S tier or maybe even a high A tier character. Below are some reasons for you to pull or invest in Hana the Grim Reaper. So how worthy is Hana potentially? She's a pretty strong arena unit which scales really well with more stats, but she's kind of mellowed down by Kamel due to his prevalence as well as heavy counter. However, make no mistake, Hana is a really solid arena unit outside of that matchup. And in general, I'll say that if you're pulling for her, you're probably doing it for the arena as well as design purposes because that's where she excels at. And her short story is pretty dope, so stay tuned for her short story. And thank you very much for watching. Do remember to like and subscribe in order to see more videos from this channel. And I'll see you guys again in my next video. Bye guys!